People are coming to this practice in droves. People are looking to access the supreme energy from something that does not look like the traditional environment, as example, the church, the Bible. You wouldn't be surprised to discover numerous diverse religions existing in New York City. One of these religions, steady growing in numbers, is Yoruba Orisha worship. Beyond Nigeria and Latin America, Orisha worship is now a staple in many of New York City boroughs. But because of negative association, it's not always easy to find. On this episode of Africa and the City, I delve into Orisha communities in New York City and see how the religion is being sustained since its initial introduction decades ago. Africa and the City. Real Africans, real stories. Yoruba Orisha practice is a system of belief created by Yoruba people of Nigeria. Throughout slavery, variations such as Santeria, Candomblé, and Umbanda were formed and still exist today. Santeria or Lukumi was introduced in New York City during the 1950s via Cuban musicians who played with legendary dancer and choreographer Catherine Dunham. African Americans seeking a deeper connection to Africa during the Black Power Movement eventually also became initiates. Today, New York City is home to a plethora of priestesses, babalawos, and orisha houses. And if you look hard enough, initiations and bimbe ceremonies are happening often throughout the city. Andrea is a new Santeria initiate. She says she was once battling breast cancer and after an initial reading by her now madrina or godmother showed her a path to healing, Andrea didn't hesitate to join the Santeria community. Tata and Kisi, I've been a uh, Palero for 44 years. Most people in the religion uh, in the New York area uh, are involved in ceremonies. Mm -hmm. I am a healer. Uh, I do acupuncture. I work with herbs. And I work with these forces. Uh, the forces in Congo religion are called in Kisi. As an Ifa priest, I'm a, I'm a healer, so people come with problems, I divine, and then he, through Ifa, I um, then perform the, the appropriate rituals to rebalance the situation that had gotten out of whack. Baba Owolowo remembers the time in New York City when a cultural revolution blossomed and African Americans embraced more aspects of Africa, including Orisha. During the 60s here uh, in Harlem, that was one of the important things about the cultural revival. Uh, natural hair, you know, no, 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 no pressing the hair. Starting to wear 
African inspired, if not African, traditional African clothes. So there was this tremendous cultural rev uh, revolution that went on while the political struggle was going on on other fronts. Every year, New York City hosts a Yemoja festival at Rockaway Beach, honoring the goddess of the sea. My producer and I managed to catch up with Nana Zakia, an African-American Orisha practitioner, who allowed us to experience her worship to Yemoja at the sea. went through a lot of trouble to come up with that tagline and it definitely is indicative of who we are. I'm a high priestess in all the practices that I'm in, the different faith, traditional African faiths, Santeria Lukumi, Palo Mayombe, which comes from the Bantu people in the Congo, Vudun by way of Benin, and the Bakinda, which comes also from the Congo. I did not know I was called to be a part of traditional religions. Uh, I grew up in a family of ministers and deacons. So I was an international beauty queen. I modeled for 14 years. I did all of those things, so definitely was not thinking about being religious in this way. Elemi has been practicing traditional African religions for more than a decade. I visited her botanica in Newark, New Jersey, where she provides the New York City, New Jersey, Orisha community with necessary tools for spiritual practice. She also took me to one of her shrines, where she often does spiritual work for numerous people seeking Orisha. This is Oshun, Yeyeo. This is Obatala on the top. Yemoja, the mother of the world, Oya, who is the Orisha of the wind. She is the patron of all the dead. She showed me her Haitian Vudan shrine, and there were more that I could not film. So I'll begin by singing for Elegba, because you sing for um, Elegba before you sing to any of the other Rishas, so that he'll open the pathway. Ibada go mo yuba. When my grandmother passed away, I started having dreams. Um, I, you know, would see all of these women who were in my family. Like I started seeing my mother's cousins. So I knew it was from my mother's side of my family. It was my mother's mother that passed away. Um, and I would start seeing like people, it was almost like I would see generations of people in my dreams going all the way to Africa. And I would see them in Africa, like in a ceremony. And in the dream, them saying to me, we're counting on you. And me thinking to myself, you're counting on me for what? You know? <laughs> it wasn't an ethical dilemma for me to make a transition from being a part of a church to then coming to um, 
be a part of the Orisha community. It's not just Yoruba religion, there are several different African religions that are practiced here in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, and it's here to stay, it's not, it's not leaving, it's not going anywhere, you know. Africa in the city. Real Africans, real stories.